welcome everybody. Uh, we are so glad to have you in our call tonight. Uh, it's good evening in East Africa, but I know it's good morning in the West, in US, Canada, and maybe good evening in uh, Philippines and other parts of the country. So I want to say welcome to every one of us to our call, uh, our showcase call this evening. I am your host, my name is Daniel Chalo, and I come from Kenya, and I am so passionate about children. I kindly ask Nelly to lead us in a word of prayer to open uh, for the day. Let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us since the beginning of the day up to this moment. We appreciate your love, your care, your protection upon our lives, oh God. As we begin our meeting, mighty Father, we pray that you may be together with us. We thank you, Father, for our presenter today, that Lord may be with him or her. The Lord will equip him. You will give him what he has to give us tonight, oh God. Thank you for each and everything. May you be with us as we start our meeting till we see the end of it. My dear Father, we shall be careful to say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, for those who are joining, you are very much welcome to our showcase lessons tonight. And uh, our tech person tonight is Jenny. She will be helping us behind the curtains as our lead trainer for the day. Our presenter uh, presents the lesson for us. I want to introduce to you our presenter tonight and uh, oh, this morning for those who are in the West. Her name is Cheryl Gruward. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, a lot of energy for me to pronounce the surname, but I call her teacher Sherry. Sherry is from Canada and she serves with a mission organization called Action International. Sherry is so much passionate with, uh, with children and she loves children so much. She has been a former primary school teacher and a children's pastor, but being, uh, she, she has been very busy equipping uh, children leaders all over the world. And this she has done for about 20 years. She comes to this, uh, to, to this uh, training tonight with a lot of wealth of experience. And Sherry, she's part of the One for 50 movement. She's uh, one of those people who were there at the inception, at the beginning of the One for 50 movement in 2008. And she serves also in the One for 50 global leadership team. I would like to remind you again, if you have any question during the training or during the presentation, please, you can put them on the chat and we'll be looking at the chat and we will answer this question at the very tail end of our presentation. So without wasting a lot of time, I know you are so much excited. Finally, let's welcome our presenter tonight, Cheryl, welcome. Oh, now what was that, the last time, the money that was left, Thank you so much, Daniel. And I want to remind uh, you to stay muted. Uh, over the last few months, five weeks or six weeks or so, we have been showcasing some of the other training that's available with One for 50. One of the key areas we looked at was One for 50 enrichments. We had a lesson on memory verse ideas uh, last month. Last week, Nancy taught us about object lessons and demonstrations. We did a lesson on communication, which is in the enrichments, but it's also part of the family and parenting curriculum. And part of it is in the, um, the brokenness to wholeness trauma curriculum. Well, today's lesson is going to go come solely from the family and parenting curriculum. And you may not be familiar with it. It is a curriculum, a 13 lesson module that's designed to help parents in the task of raising their children as disciples of Jesus, helping their children to develop to full potential. You can see on the screen here that the curriculum begins with looking at some biblical foundations. There's a lesson on what the Bible says about families. Then it looks at the context that families are in with the topic of building strong families in today's world. We have four lessons that are related to effective parenting skills, understanding how children grow, which looks at um, development of children, 
the needs of every child, communicating with children, which we showcased in part before, and the heart of parenting. And then, because One for 50 really wants to focus on the importance of parents being disciple makers of their own children, we have five lessons that are related to discipleship in the family. So family discipleship, parenting so children flourish, discipline for growth, handling outside influences, and family worship. And finally, there's two lessons on the church and family partnering how churches can help family and reaching unreached families in your community. Now, as with all of our curriculum in One for 50, this curriculum is open source. So you can reproduce it, you can modify it, and you can translate it, but be sure to send it back so we can share it with others if you translate it. And you can also use parts of this module to um, supplement maybe other parenting training you may do if you're doing a workshop or a, or a weekend seminar. And we know that families are different in different cultures all over the world. So we expect and, and give you permission to adapt this curriculum to your own cultural contact context, pardon me. Well, today's lesson is from the module. It's lesson 10 on handling outside influences. And we do have the handout available to you. And Jenny is going to put that in the chat if you want to undownload it, if you didn't see it on the WhatsApp. But as parents and children's leaders, we have to remember that God has put us as one of the most influential positions in our children's lives. So in this lesson, we are going to discuss handling outside influences and how we can use them to as opportunities to help our children grow as disciples, grow in character. So we're going to begin with the thought of character and how it begins with heart change. And then we're going to begin to explore this process on how we can handle outside influences. We'll talk then about two specific outside influences. One is friendships with non-Christians, and the other one and this is one you're going to actually do as kind of a practicum in breakout rooms, handling electronic media, because we want you to practice the process. And finally, we'll have some time for reflection and prayer. So to begin with, I want you to think back to when you were a child or a teenager. For some of you, you're going to have to think back a little bit farther than others, but you try really hard. So I want you to think of the activities, the music, the people, maybe the television shows that influenced you. And it could be a positive or it could be a negative influence. And now we're, we're going to take some time to share our, men our memories with one another. So first of all, I would love if you can write in the chat, what are some of the activities from when you were a child or a teenager that positively influenced your life? Just take a moment and write that into the chat. Jonathan, building Lego, building blocks was a positive thing for you. Thank you, Jonathan. Playing outside with your friends, Kimberly said. Jezza said, going to vacation Bible school. For me, it was camping. Thank you, Debbie. Nancy says, sports teams. Arthur says, sports as well. Being mentored, Ruth said. Girls meetings, Nellie. Sonia says, playing with her friends. For me, it was climbing trees out on the farm. That was one of my favorite things to do. Ah, oh, great. Well, let's look at the opposite side then. What were some of the activities or influences that were negative, that negatively influenced you? Watching MTV, that's a video channel. Jonathan, thank you, Kimberly. Jonathan, swimming lessons. And probably it sounds like it might have been traumatic for him, right? <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan. Hope you've gone over your thing. Dating too early. Ah, thank you, Arthur. Jezza, friends escaping your class. Ooh, I had friends that would skip class as well. Yeah, thank you, Jezza. Any other things that were negative influences when you were a child or teenager? A skydiving, oh, sky skiving, skiving class? I'm not sure what that is, Sonia. Riding a bike, but never getting it right. It was traumatic, it sounds like. Thank you, Nellie. 
Yeah. So that we know there were very things that were good for us. There were things that were negative uh, for us as well. Well, think about the children and the youth of today now. What are some of the activities or the people or the things that are negatively influencing children and youth in your country today? Write that into the chat. TikTok. Thank you, Jezza. That whole video. Halloween was, says Ruth, just the evil of all of that. The media, re redefining biblical truths, Jonathan said, according to the culture. Instagram. Yeah. Any other things? Having sex early, domestic violence. Yeah, that's definitely a negative influence. Access to cell phones when they are young. Yeah. I was just on another call and one of the issues they were talking about was gender identity. And in my culture, it's very fluid right now. Drugs, war, all of these things, gangs might be. All of these things are issues that are affecting movies. Thank you, Sonia. All of these things are affecting our children in a negative way, in some way. So let's take a look at how we can handle these outside influences. Thank you, everyone, for your great responses here. Um, we have to begin by looking at the heart of our children because character and dealing with outside influences has to begin with character change. And so I've asked Jezza if she could read Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 8 for us. Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were be to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names to Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Amen. Thank you, Jezza. What a powerful story. You see, Daniel was taken away from his home and from his culture, and he was put into a nation that was known for its godless way of life. Yet, when he was faced with a decision regarding how he would, under, how he would handle this outside influence of the king's food and drink, Daniel stood strong in his faith. So in the chat, I would love you to tell me, how was Daniel able to do that? How was he able to stand firm? And where did his character come from? Take a moment and just respond. What did we learn from Daniel's example? He knew his God, Kimberly said, thank you. That's how he was able to stand firm in his faith. Any other thoughts? From his family, his, thank you, Nelly. His resolutions, his convictions, Jonathan said. His church, his leaders. It must have been taught in Israel, Arthur says. He learned it from a young age and from his parents. Exactly. That's what we're hoping. We don't know because the Bible doesn't tell us specifically, but we're going to assume that. He read the word of God. He knew the word of God. Exactly, Sonia. Thank you, Prabhu. I think we realize that his character came from within. It was inside of him. Because in verse 8, it said that Daniel resolved, or the King James Version says he purposed in his heart. He made the decision from within that he was going to follow his God and not eat 
the king's food. Rebecca, thank you. His character stayed intact. And I think we can see that he was changed from the inside, so he was able to deal with these outside influences. And so I want to think about character starting with that heart from the inside. As parents and children's ministry leaders, it's important for us to see that godly character in our children's lives flows from within. And then it comes out. It begins with the heart of the child, who they are on the inside. So again, in the chat, who do you want your children to be in their inmost being? What do you want that character from the inside to be like? Give me one word that would describe how you would like your children, your own children, or the children in your ministry to be like. Thank you, Kimberly. She said strong. Kim, Debbie also said strong. Nellie, honesty. Nancy, confident disciples. Unmovable. Acting with justice, mercy, walking humbly, being faithful. Thank you, Jonathan, Jezza. Um, Sonia says, honesty. These are the things that we want to be in the inmost being, unchangeable, that firmness. I love it. But around that heart, that being, there's also a bit of knowledge that has to be done. We want our children to know things. When God transforms children's heart, they are going to be, um, they are going to be transformed in their thoughts as well. The truths they learn about God in their head also become real and personal in their heart and not just transformation. So what are some of the truths about God that you want your children to know, to embrace, and to just really um, stick into their hearts? Write a word or a few phrase, phrases into their heart. Faithful. We want them to know faithfulness that God is love. Thank you, Ruth. That God's word is true. Thank you, Jonathan, with no fault. Faithful, Hamanote as well has said, that God cares for them, that he is consistent. Yeah, that he never changes. Thank you, Nancy. That there's only one God. Thank you, Nellie. All of these things are things we want our children to know. Arthur, that he's dependable, that he's loving, says Sonia, that he's just uh, Kimani, he's loving God. All of these things are the knowledge we want our children to know and to embrace in their hearts. But there's one more circle that we want to show. This is the doing. So when God is transforming hearts, when they've got this knowledge, um, there's also the doing. This is when our children are transformed in their heart, they're going to bear fruit. They're going to bear spiritual fruit. They're going to do the things that honor God. So what are some of the things we want our children to do that show that they love God and that they're honoring God? Write a couple of a thought or two into the chat there. Okay. We've got, I'm not sure where we started in the last one, being kind. Uh, Sonia, I'm gonna, forgiveness is one. Speaking out for what is true, even if they're the only one. To pray, to love others. Exactly. Thank you. To model Christ, to obey his word, to walk in that things, to be courageous, to witness, to remain true to the Bible. Amen. Amen. I just, I love this. This is what we want our children to do. However, it can become very easy for us as parents and children's leader to focus on what children should be doing. And then we try to change their behaviors, especially if it's an undesirable behavior. But if we focus only on the doing and we ignore the being, you see how it's coming from the inside on the picture there? If we focus only on the doing and we don't pay attention to the being, the inward parts, what's going to happen to the child? What kind of a disciple will they be? Or will they be a disciple at all? If we're just focusing on behaviors, it's going to be fake, Nancy says. Jonathan, they might have bitterness and resentment toward the church or toward their parents. It's superficial. Exactly. Yeah, thank you, Arthur. They'll be like Pharisees, Ruth says. There may be anger. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Kimberly. All of these things, or they may be following Jesus. Debbie, you're exactly, I was thinking the same thing. They may give up easily. They may follow Jesus, but when it gets tough, 
they choose not to follow him anymore. They'll just do the right thing when someone's looking. Thank you, Jezza. Or Sonia says they may become vengeful and confused. Thank you so much for these great, great answers. But does this mean then that we should never guide our children? Well, absolutely not. Because God commands us that we should teach our children his ways. And even though, like we said, some of you mentioned earlier, even though the Bible didn't say, I'm sure that Daniel's parents, I'm sure that the Israelite community helped train Daniel. And they taught him the ways of God. They taught him the laws. And they helped him develop the routines and the practices that he continued to do in Babylon. So while there was outward focus from coming, we want children to be moving from the inside out. When we're training, sometimes that's happening from the outside in. Let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Let's say you are parents and you establish this routine. We have, you want your, pray, your family to pray together in the mornings before you have breakfast. So that's something you do. You want to pray together with your child every day. And so after you follow that routine more and more consistently, your child is going to know that prayer is important. And with the Holy Spirit's help, eventually the child is going to develop his or her own prayer life. There's a change in the side. They realize they can come to God, whether they're with you, the parent, or, we, or on their own. Now, we need to remember that um, this is something it's coming from the inside to the out as a child expresses it. But sometimes when we train our children, it goes from the outside in. I am wondering if there's anyone else who would love to share a personal example of how you've helped your children develop a spiritual practice, or maybe the children in your ministry, what you did, how you helped them know, and what you've seen. You can either raise your hand or you could... Um, write your name in the chat and I'll let you unmute and share that and send. Jonathan, do you want to just read, do you want to just unmute? I see you've got something that you wrote in the chat. Yeah. Just explain it. Seeing my, seeing my parents acknowledge their own sin and ask for forgiveness helped me to practice um, the habits of confessing to God and, and develop a heart of humility. Okay. So the example of your parents was very, very important uh, to know, and then put that into your own heart. Thank you so much for sharing that. So lasting change in our children's lives always comes from that heart. It always starts from the center if we want lasting change. As the Holy Spirit changes our children's hearts, that godly character is going to come out and it's going to produce Christ-honoring, visible fruit. So let's take a look at how this relates to handling outside influences. Thank you, Nelly, for setting a daily reading schedule as a family. And as you set that that routine, then your children begin to learn it as themselves. Excellent. So let's take a look now at some outside influences. Now, earlier in the lesson, we identified some of the outside influences that affect our children. A lot of you talked about media, um, movies, you talked about TikTok, you talked about social media, you talked about cell phones, you talked about friendships, you talked about um, some of the sports or activities that you may do that were negative influences. There are so many things that are, um, that are a part of our um, children's lives that can be negative. But when we're thinking about handling outside influences, we have to realize that this is an opportunity. It's not just a headache for us as parents or children's ministry. It's an opportunity to disciple our children. It's an opportunity to teach them how to think and not just what to think. Let me say that again. We have an opportunity to teach them how to think and not just what to think. And so we have to begin, if we're going to help our children handle outside influences, I want to suggest a way of asking and answering four very important questions. And we are going to go through these questions a few times during this particular uh, session um, and practice how we can ask them. The first question is, what are the issues that concern you as a parent or maybe as a children's leader regarding this influence? Second, 
what spiritual practices could we establish with our children when it comes to this influence? Third, what questions can you discuss with your child to help them to think, think well about this issue? And finally, what scriptures speak to this particular influence that you could look at with your child? Now, I'm going to go through an example here. It's not one that we mentioned at the beginning, but I think it's something all the children in many places deal with. And that's the whole idea of a fad or a trend. Um, that's something that's popular that every child wants. It might be, I know in some cultures, it might be a brand of shoes or it might be a brand of clothing, or a style of wearing your hair, or, or piercing, or maybe it's a game, or, an act, or a toy that other children have, and your child just wants to have. That's what I mean by trends or, or, or fads, because some parents, this is an influence that some parents and children's ministry leaders are dealing with. So let's look at the first question. What are the issues that concern me as a parent or a child's leader regarding these fads, these trends, wanting what all these other children want to have. And I, these are some of the answers that I came up with. I'm, I'm concerned that my child or the children in my program just want it because all the other children want it. So they're, they're giving in to peer pressure and peer pressure is a very real thing for children and youth. Another uh, concern I may have is the cost. It cost. It may cost a lot of money, and we may not have a lot of extra money. But more importantly, I may be concerned that if my child is always wanting something that others have, it begins to foster in their character this greediness. Or maybe they develop this mindset of materialism. They just want more things, more things. So these are some of my concerns about having a trend or a fad or wanting things that everybody else has. Well, then what are some spiritual practices or it could be just family practices that you establish with the child to this outside influence? Hmm, what could I do to help my child to learn how to deal with this? Well, some of the things I thought of here were that maybe my child should pay for any items that they want like this with their own money, some of it, or maybe all of it. It might teach them the importance of saving. It teaches them the importance of working for what they get, not just giving things to them. Another important principle I would want to establish within my home is that tithing always takes priorities over other things, buying something new that are not necessities. And so I want my child from an early age to understand that we always give to God first and that they would look at giving to God rather than just wanting for myself. Another practice we may do is we may look at God's word. Pray about, does God really want us to have this? What does the word of God say? And we're going to look at some scriptures in a minute. The third question that we're going to think wisely about is what questions might I discuss with your child to help them think well about the issue? Hmm. What questions might I want to talk? And remembering back to the communication lesson, I'm not going to preach to my child here, and I'm not going to interrogate them. I need to do it in a discussion, so it's two ways. So here are a few of the questions that I thought of. First of all, why do you want this? And I'm not going to be accusing, why do you want this? I want to do, so tell me, why do you want this item, this thing or this activity, this game? And I can become aware of whether it's their peers are pressuring them. I, I, they want to be accepted. They want to fit in with their friends. And if they don't have it, they feel like they don't belong. Or is there something else? I might ask them, do you need this thing to be absolutely happy? If they're like most children and youth, they will say, yes, I need this to be absolutely happy. But then my follow-up question, I would say, well, why? Why do you need this to be happy? So you begin to understand what's going on in their minds um, and what are the um, issues that are they might be considering. I might ask the question, 
how might having this item, this toy, this, this um, pair of shoes, whatever, how might it affect your priorities or your attitudes? With the attitudes, it may be that they become proud because, oh, I have this and you don't have this. They begin to look down or they begin to judge other people. If it's an activity like maybe an online game or a, a computer game, it might affect priorities. It might start taking away the time they should be spending on their homework or with their family or with God. Another question we can discuss as a family is, is this a good investment of the resources that God has given us? So if resources are, are small, it may not be a good investment at this time. Well, the fourth question that we ask then is, what scriptures speak to this influence that we could look at with a child? And so some scriptures are very direct. Some of them are more the principle that we apply. So I might look at Proverbs 28, 25. A greedy person stirs up dissension and how when we want more, it can really break up unity. I might look at Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21, which talks about laying up our treasures in heaven rather than on earth. Or 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23, where it talks about everything is permissible, but not everything being beneficial. And talking with my child, is this just beneficial or is this um, really helpful? So these are the four questions. When we look at scripture, when we talk about what spiritual practices, and when we help children think about the issues with good questions and be part of the decision-making process, they provide opportunities for trans transformation to take place in the heart. So now we're gonna do it together. We're gonna look at these four questions as they relate to some of the outside influences that we've mentioned in the lives of our children. And the one we're gonna look at is handling friendships with non-Christians. Everywhere our children go, they are in contact with children who maybe don't know Jesus or don't follow Jesus. Is this an issue in your uh, context with you and your children? You can either give me a thumbs up uh, reaction or say yes into the chat. Arthur says, yes, this is an issue. Friendships with non-Christians. Thank you, Sonia. Yeah. So I see a lot of people are saying, yes, this is, this is an issue with us and our children. All right. Great. So this is a good question or a good issue to discuss together. So as parents and as children's ministry leaders, we have to help our children think wisely about choosing their friends. And so we are go I'm going to go through the four questions with you. You can see them there, but I'm going to sh shift my, sh uh, my screen sharing in a moment here, and we're going to work on the whiteboard. So I would like you to write, as we go through the questions, I would love you to write your answers into the chat, and then I am going to put them onto the whiteboard. So the very first question, if you remember, are what are some of the concerns you have as a parent? about this issue or as a leader what are some of your concerns about children having friendships with non-christians just write ideas into the chat they may expose expose them to ungodly behaviors thank you nancy says that they are unmonitored so you don't know what they're doing exactly thank you all right have bad influences bad influences making wrong choices uh, information that is not godly, they can easily drift away from the faith, uh, copy and paste lifestyle. That's an interesting way to put it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we have several concerns as parents or as children's ministry leaders, and there may be more that come in. Um, what I'm hoping to do is at the end of this call, I'm going to compile all of our thoughts and we'll put it, make it into a document, a Word document, and give it to you, um, give it to you all in the WhatsApp chat. Uh, so that you can come back and review this. Uh, we've got getting wrong information. And joining the wrong faiths. Okay, so that's the concern. The next question we ask is, what are some spiritual practices that we could cultivate with our children to help them combat this or to deal with this influence when it comes to the issue of having non-Christian friends? I can give you an example as... <laughs> 
they start, we can pray for their friends, pray together for their friends. That's a spirit. Okay, what else could we do? Invite them to church. Thank you, Daniel. Get to know them. Thank you, Jezza. Help them know the only true source is the Bible. Bring the friends home. Invite them home so you can build relationships there. Several people said that. Okay. Visit together. Oh, boy, lots of them coming in. Evangelize them. Tell them about Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. Read read to them the word of God. Visit their homes. Learn verses from the Proverbs about this. Mm -hmm. This will come up in our next question. Yeah. I think another thing we can do is teach our children to evangelize, that they are yeah. evangelists, not just us. We uh, create create a godly culture for them so that they evangelize. Beth put that, yeah, she got there. Um, teach them to share with their friends. Yeah. Join, Somebody was thinking the same as me. Yeah. yeah. Join their social media apps and show them good examples. These are excellent. Yeah. You're thinking well to about share the gospel. This. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to just get into a new thing because we're going to go on to the next one. The next one was what are some questions we can ask our own child about the issue of non-believing friends? This will take a little bit longer to write. Maybe we can say, I can give you an example. Um, who is influencing whom? Are you in influencing them or are they influencing you? What, what do, do you, you admire? admire? Thank you, Jonathan. Because even if they're not believers, there's also there's still good qualities. Any other questions? How they want to look. What would God think about how they are acting? Who are their heroes? That's interesting. Where do they go to church? Or do they go to church? <laughs> or do they go to church? Yeah. In do you have any spiritual concerns about your friend? Have you talked to them about Jesus? And what kind of friend are you being? Do they believe in God? Do they talk about God? Okay. Which books are they reading? Oh, my goodness. Everybody's coming in. This is great. <laughs> Okay, we're going to stop, though, because we are not going to get through the lesson <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> but as I said, I will make all of this. We'll look, go through the chat. Everything you've written in the chat, we can put into the document because we will save the chat. They, with, if, if they're kids, they're probably not reading a lot of books. It's probably what are they watching or what social media things are they watching? And the, it's not just about the books. Um, the last one is about what scriptures what scriptures could you look at with your child to help them think well about this particular topic? I'm going to give you one, Matthew 5. And you may not remember the scripture, but you if you can you can say the ver or the, the reference. 13 to 16. This is about being salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world, and that we need to be shine your light before men. So this is something about us being a light for others. What are some other scriptures we might be able to share or discuss with our child? Probably not all at the same time because it would be a little bit overwhelming. Micah 6 8, which is about doing justice, loving mercy. Joshua 1 8. Thank you, uh, Jonathan and Sonia. We've got 2 Timothy 4 12. That's being set an example for the believers. I would include, there's a lot. Um, I think Nancy said earlier. So we have Romans 3.23. Um, remember, this is you're talking about with your own child. This is not just what you're sharing with the non-Christian child. What are scriptures you could share about with your own child to help them understand about what the Bible teaches about non-Christian friends? So we've got Romans 5.8. I There's lots of Proverbs. I agree, Nancy. There's many Proverbs that are about uh, friendships with things. There's a 1 Corinthians 15.33. It says um, bad company corrupts good character. And so that sort of thing. But I would also look at the positive. Proverbs 13, 20, I see. John 15. Okay, John. Great. And All right. Proverbs 18, yep. 24. There were a couple more. Proverbs yeah, 18, they're, 24. They're keeping. Okay, yeah. we're gonna, I'm going to pause here. And again, I'm going to write them in and go back to our, our PowerPoint here. But this is excellent. But I want to go back to the PowerPoint and kind of take a look. So we've looked at these four questions. And like you said, we could just keep going on and on and on. There's so much we can do. And that's one of the reasons we want to do this as a group, because it helps us think well. And this is a great activity we can do, even with a group of children, especially older primary school and, and young youth. Um, 
So we've looked at the questions as they relate to developing friendships with non-Christians. We identified our concerns. We identified our spiritual practices, questions that we could ask our own children, and scriptures that we could read to help them understand what the Bible says. But many of you asked or identified the issue of electronic media. And this is a huge one for today's world. It can include things like video games, internet, social media, TikTok, um, Instagram, movies, music, like all of these things. And we have to realize that every one of the electronic media tools can be used for the glory of God. And they are in some cases. However, we live in a fallen world. And so these tools can also shape the values of our children in ways that are not aligning with scripture. And our kids, especially if they're new into the area of media, they need guidance and foundations as they encounter the media influences. And they're, they're being exposed to it on a daily basis. So now we are going to give you the opportunity to go through the process. You got the questions down, Pat, I hope. So it's the whole process is of thinking wisely and helping your child think wisely about this issue of how to handle electronic media. We are going to put you into breakout rooms for 10 minutes. And in your rooms, you will have the opportunity to talk about this influence um, using these four questions that we've discussed. Remember, you only have about two or three minutes for each question. We're just showcasing this. With, we could take a lot more. but get a reporter in your group who can report back. And when you come back, we're gonna make another uh, whiteboard sheet and we're gonna get all your answers together. All right, welcome back everyone. We are going to now uh, hear from the groups. Uh, we'll start with Debbie. If you can just share three or four of the concerns that you had, and then we'll have Sonia come after that. Um, okay, so one of the concerns that came out, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, like media does not really portray what is true, but children tend to view everything as correct or true. So they get confused. Great. What else? Yeah. Um, uh, children become addicted. Some of the things, some of the things that, that they see seem to be innocent, but actually they give different uh, messages along the way. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, media has uh, a demonic agenda mm -hmm. and uh, different, you know, like different fates. Uh, Kimberly, can you can you expound more on this one? Yeah, I could. It's just that sometimes, uh, like we were talking about Disney and Disney has um, made several within the last six months um, movies and cartoons that are absolutely demonic. So we just talked about that. Thank you, uh, Debbie's group. I'm Sonia. Do you have something to add to this? Um, too much info. We got one. Um, too much information. Alter skelter information. They don't know what to take in. They don't know what to not take, not to take in. Then um, competition. Competition with others. Um, I, I know this app. You don't know this app. Um, I found out about this app. You've never tried it on competition. Mm -hmm. That's okay. it for our group. Good. My group also said the the fact that we have no control over what they are they might be seeing or doing. And our group also said talked about um, the access to pornography. And and uh, there's been research that's done that shows that a lot of children get their their sexual ed sex education from pornography or from social media. All right. What are some spiritual practices? We'll start with. Um, Sonia's group this time. Number one was how much time are you going to give them concerning the app? Mm -hmm. How much time? Ever evaluate on the information they are getting, they are getting spiritually on a spiritual base. And then number three, we got um, um tell them the importance of physical fellowship more than them being on their phones all day. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Debbie, do you have a few more to add? Yes, uh, there's two, like they can visit some good sites that are available and parents can lead them to that. And uh, somebody has mentioned also that if we can teach the children 
how to inquire from God, like having a God corner so that they can, you know, ask questions mm. about yeah. God. Yeah, we had that one in ours as well. We also said there there is actually software that you can put on your computer or on your televisions or computers that screen pornographic sites or they they um, filter them so children children cannot access them, access them. Mm -hmm. And there's those are free. You can go on to websites like Focus on the Family and they can give you some names of of this software that you can add. One of the other things we talked about was just talking to your children about what they do or what they, so just having an open conversation with them so that they would know. So let's go on to the third one. What are some questions we could ask our child about electronic medias? We will start with Debbie this time. Yeah, we came up with one because the time was so fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like how much, how much time are they actually spending versus spending time with the Lord? Uh, there was something about uh, their walk with God, maybe asking them how are they doing in their walk with God. Sonia, did you have other questions? Yes, we did. Um, number one question was, why do you watch what you're watching? And then um, number two is, what do you like about the app you're using or what you're listening to or the movie you're watching? Um, how did you find about the app and then of what benefit does it bring to you? You must have been listening to my group because we had almost the same questions. No, 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 no. <laughs> you guys were the one listening to us. We need to ask you guys. <laughs> Great. Yeah, we yeah we said in one of the other ones is why do you like visiting this website? But we asked about the benefits, but not just about the benefits, but what what are the the issues or what are your concerns? Asking the child what are their concerns? And we had one. The last one we talked about is if Jesus or your parent were sitting with you, would you want to watch this or do this activity? Wow, that's a good one. So then it just helps them realize that, oh, if, if I don't, wouldn't want my parent to see it or I wouldn't want Jesus to see it. Okay, we've got, oh, we're already behind time, but we're going to quickly go just a couple scriptures. Sonia, did you have any scriptures that your group would use? Philippians 4, 8. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4, 2, 3, 4, 23. Then Joshua 1, 8. And Psalms 1 to 6. Psalms 1, 1 to 6. Hey, Debbie, did your group have any others? Yes, we had Romans 12, 1 and 2. We also had 2 Corinthians 5, 17, like reminding them about who they were, who they are now. We also had Matthew 6, 33 and uh, 2 Timothy 2, 15. Great. And I think uh, Proverbs 17, 17. But we had Psalm 139, the first verses about nothing is hidden from God. And we had Psalm... It's in Psalm 101, where I will set no evil thing before my eyes. Those are the ones that we added there. So this is fantastic. I am just blown away by your amazing responses here. And I hope you are encouraged as well. And thank you all for these great, great ideas. I'm going to go back just to take a look here. We need to wrap up this. But as these four questions here can be used for any outside influence. And this is something that we can use over and over again, even discussing with our children to help them be thinking through, the, through, through how that influence affects them. You can do it with your own family. You can do it with children in a Bible club or a class. One of the people in our group said she was teaching them about this. And, and sometimes they're just not thinking because we've never talked about it. So how do you feel as you consider this particular tool? Is it a positive thing? You can give me a thumbs up, give it a yes, write your response in the chat, whatever. How does this tool look for you as you consider talking with your own family or with kids in your Bible club or your Sunday school class or outreaches? Kimberly has a big yes. She says, I'll be using it. Thank you, Kimberly. Anyone else? Was this, will this be helpful for you? Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. I'm hearing yes. It's praise the Lord. So every time our children are faced with outside influences, we have this opportunity not just to, to correct them, but to disciple them. Isn't that great? Because these teachable moments will allow us as leaders and parents 
and children to evaluate the issue, to talk through choices from that spiritual perspective. We want our kids to be like Daniel, so they resolve to do what is right and what is godly, and they learn to make the best decisions for themselves because we cannot always be with them. So I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed as you think of all the things that are going on in the world and whether or not we're handling them the right way. But I want to leave you with this encouragement from the scriptures. It's from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And read along with me, stay muted, but read with me these verses, this verse, sorry. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it amen you see god is the one who sanctifies our children's spirits the being part of them their souls their bodies the things they know the things they do do you remember that being knowing and doing and so we need to trust God with every area of their lives because God and God alone will transform their hearts and bring out that outward fruit that we long for our children to bear. And how reassuring that last line, he is faithful and he will do it. Amen. Well, amen. We need to close. Um, this has been such a rich time. I think we could stay for two hours discussing all of these things, but our time is gone and, and I'm very aware of respecting that. But think about what God has been saying to you in this lesson. There's a few questions here for um, reflecting on and we're gonna have a question and answer time for those who want to stay afterwards. So if you've got questions, you can be thinking about them um, and then you can either put them in the chat or raising your hands. But as a parent or as a children's leader, have you been more focused on the behavior of your children, just the doing, or are you more focused on the being? And think about what you might do to help your children develop the inner qualities of disciples. Secondly, what are the spiritual practices or routines that you could start in your family or maybe with your class to help your children grow? I know that many of you do things already, but are there things that help them can grow inwardly as well as outwardly? And thirdly, I want you to practice this on your own or with, with people in your context. Choose an outside influence that's influent, affecting your children, uh, the children in your house or the children in your ministry, and then talk about the issue of the answers to those four questions. And maybe even talk about it with kids so that you can get some perspective from them. All right, I would love to close in prayer because I know this is something that all of us struggle with in one way or another. But I would love to pray for all of you uh, as we close our time. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the one who transforms us, that you sanctify us completely, that you are faithful and that you will do it. And we thank you that that promises for our children as well. But I'm very aware of each one of our leaders on the call and the challenges that they face in their cultures with the influences on their children. And Lord, we pray for strength and for wisdom for us as leaders, as parents, as grandparents, as we seek to help our children wisely navigate these issues in their lives. But we pray for our children as well, God. We pray for protection from the evil one who wants to destroy them, who wants to pull them away from truth. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would surround them, that you would give them minds that will discern and think wisely about the things in their lives, that they would be salt and light within their peer group, their friends, their schools, their teams, um, and the people with whom they interact, that they would shine for you, that they would be Daniels, where they would resolve to honor you in all that they do. Bless my friends. Thank you for the time we've had together. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow. What a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, everyone who attended this call. We are so much grateful for you, for your time in this uh, call. 
Therefore, we want to thank you and recognize your presence is very important. We want also to, to inform you that the Q&A question is about to come in just a few minutes. So keep on typing your questions in the chat or you can raise your hands. But before that, we want also to thank our presenter, Cheryl, for such a wonderful job. This is a timely lesson for all of us. And this is one of the best showcases of the year. Thank you also to Jenny, our tech lead, uh, leader behind the scenes. She's been helping us with the presentation and so on and making sure the call is steady and flowing. And we therefore say thank you to you, Jenny. Now, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, we have one more showcase to come. And that is happening on 29th of November. That is the last showcase from the 1 for 50 movement this year. And we therefore invite you to still come. We are looking forward to see you there. And our presenter will be Jezza Pingo. She will be presenting to us about children and trauma. What a training. You cannot miss this on the 29th, same time. And we will share with you the link to that as we continue. And therefore, if you can invite your training teams to join us then in that call. Now it's, it's another time for the Q and A, but you are free. If you feel like you're squeezed and your program is uh, tight, you can leave the call. We are done, but if you want to remain around and uh, listen to the questions and answer section, please join us. Thank you very much. And from all of us, I have been your host and your MC. My name is Pastor Daniel Charlo. For those who are leaving, God bless you. For the rest of us, let's get to the chat and bring on the questions. We are looking at the chat right now. Okay, thank you, Pastor Dan. Um, I have two questions. The first one is, I have been in a situation where a child is born again, but is um, most of the people around her are those who are not born again. So there was a lot of peer pressure, but trying to talk to this girl, she would come and tell me all the scriptures that you quote, all those things, Yes, I understand, but I live on this earth and the things that these people are doing are here and they're happening everywhere. So it was like she was saying, yes, I believe the scriptures, but I really don't think I believe that what you're telling me will happen to me. God will give me that strength right now because everybody around me is doing it. So what am I going to do? How do I handle that situation? And then the second question is, I, I tend to believe that mostly Satan, whatever he shows is a copycat of what, the main thing, the genuine thing that God has. So most of this social media may be portraying something that is bad. Is there a good site or a good uh, channel for movies? Like there is Netflix that has all the filth. Is there something that is set for children who are being raised in a Christian way? Thank you. Yeah. I think Milton has just asked that same question. We can talk about the positive side of media, the sites. Um, I know right now media, um, and I think we have access to that for free as as because we're partnered with the 414 move, movement that has lots of media movies for children. It's many people use it for Bible studies for adults but it also um, has a lot of children's ministry stuff. I think it will take time to compile some of those positive sites, but that's um, that's one of the things. So if you um, would, thank you, Jonathan, for uh, going, if you see in the link, if you can copy the link in the chat or, or click on it, that will get you into Right Now Media. As we are partnered with the 414 movement, we can access Right Now Media as members of the 414 movement. Um, so that's one thing. But to answer your first question, Jane, with this child, many times that's the challenge with children. They know the word of God, but it, there's a disconnect between their head and their heart. They, they don't see how it applies into the world that they are around them. And I think with this particular girl, it's going to take a lot of just personal mentoring and talking through the specific issues 
of what she's going through and how the word of God can apply and talk and helping her say, when your friends say this, or when your friends do this, what can you do? So it's, you can help her to think through the scenarios of dealing with her friends, because it's like, otherwise children kind of, um, they dichotomize or they put God in this Sunday box. Um, and then the rest of their life, they live doing it because they don't have connection between what they learn in Sunday school or Bible club and what the rest of their life is. So they need, I think if she's the only one in a large group of non-believers, having a mentor with her and, and walking a little bit more carefully with her to help her think through these would be, I think, a way to go about it. Still asking the same kinds of questions with her, but just being that reassuring voice because the voice she's hearing is her friends. Thank you, Jane. Are there any other questions? Just a comment. Uh, I, ha I had a, a child from my church who was using uh, her daddy's phone um she created a, a group where they were sharing nude, nude uh, pictures but using and uh, she made a password for that group but even that she could not notice and uh, the icon of the group uh she she, she put a picture of jesus um, she could log in and and uh, and do what on, on WhatsApp. We have been showing each other uh, videos um, and dressing ourselves and showing us our friends' nakedness. And um, and then one day, the younger sister was going to find out because she wanted to 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 play a game on the same phone, the dad's phone. phone. So um, she was the one who discovered that and was like, "What group is this?" That you have a group with Jesus because the the father was not busy with the WhatsApp. Uh, he's a busy man. He's a very busy man. Yeah. So they took an advantage of that uh, to use the phone uh, for her own good. Mm -hmm. So when the father uh, discovered about that, he told me and reported me the girl, and um, I I did not confront her like. Why were you doing that? So I had to ask a lot of questions like, do you know how to use WhatsApp? Do you know the uh, the networks which can which you can use to connect to to other people? Uh, which one do you? Then she was like, I like Facebook because uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, is too wide. It's too wide, but WhatsApp uh, is a bit is a bit private to me. So I can't do that because she was already addicted in doing that. She could get another phone and do that. Um, after, after having a good discussion with her, uh, that's when she admitted that she was on the wrong way. And um, she deleted the group. Uh, she apologized to her then, and she gave her life to Jesus because she was pretending. There are some children in our church. We think they are born again, but they are not born again. They just come because their parents are bringing them to church. Mm -hmm. So uh, on that, I helped her, and she got born again. She's the one now, when we are talking about technology, she's the one who talks a lot to her friends. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. no small sites. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was just comment. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Martha. I think we caught it all. But I think what I heard from you is that you took the time to discuss it with her to get her thinking. And yes. the challenge with young people is many times they'll do it because it's fun or it's interesting. But they don't think of the the what are the implications or what are the ramifications of their activity, especially you know, if they're sexting or, or like posting pic these pictures on WhatsApp or, or in a text group and stuff, because somebody can easily share that on the web and suddenly they're, they're, they're being exposed. And so helping those children think well is, is, is really good. And I love the fact that she ended up giving her life to the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, my friends, our time is up. Um, I know if you have other questions, you can write them into the, the group chat 
and um, we'd be happy to have conversations there as well. And I love the idea where a couple of people talked about doing a positive session on what are good media and sites and how we can use media for child discipleship. I think we were already talking about that and we have a potential person to, to help us with that. And we'll do that in 2023. All right, the Lord bless you. Have a great evening, a great day. For those of you who are it's still morning and we'll talk to you again.